Here remembering the needs of our people. Uh, Brother Gary, I don't remember if I called his name uh, earlier in our prayer request. Brother Gary needs healing in his back. We'll remember him. If you have your Bible, turn to the book of 1 Kings chapter 11. I want to preach a message that I've titled, The One That Got Away. The One That Got Away. Everybody found 1 Kings chapter 11? Going to begin reading in verse number 14. And the Lord stirred up an adversary unto Solomon. Now the word adversary is an enemy. The Lord stirred up an adversary unto Solomon. His name was Hadad, the Edomite. He was, the, was of the king's seed in Edom. For it came to pass when David was in Edom, and Joab, the captain of the host, was gone up to bury the slain after he had smitten every male in Edom. For six months did Joab remain there with all Israel until he had cut off every male in Edom. That Hadad fled, he and certain Edomites of his father's servants with him, to go into Egypt. Hadad being yet a little child. And there arose out, let, let, let me just stop there, uh, that Hadad fled, he and the Edomites of his father's servant with him to go into the cities of his father, uh, uh, going to uh, Egypt. Hadad was yet a little child. And in verse 25, you will see where there was another adversary to Solomon. And it says uh, at the end of that, that all, uh, the adversary was to all the days of Solomon, not to mention or besides the mischief that Hadad did. All right? Let's pray. Father, I thank you for the great atmosphere of worship that's in our church. God, I am grateful beyond measure for what you're doing in the Rise and Fall Church. And I pray, God, you progress us spiritually. God, more importantly than how big our numbers grow, we must grow spiritually. Amen. I pray that you would enhance our worship, that we can touch the hem of your garment. I pray, God, that our worship would be so appealing to you that your presence would fall and the cloud of your glory would reign abundantly in this church. Jesus, without you, we're nothing but a bunch of people sitting in a hot room listening to a yelling preacher. But Jesus, with you, we're conquerors, we're overcomers. We're in my army advancing the kingdom of God. So I pray today, God, for a special anointing as I preach this message. I pray that you bind every distraction. Allow us to hear and receive and respond to the Word of God. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Bless you, Lord. Over the last two Sundays, I've preached on Solomon in all of his greatness and in all of his failure. And I want to point out something to you this morning that continued to haunt Solomon uh, throughout his life. And this is something really Solomon didn't do, but something his father David did, or at least his father's soldiers failed to do. Now listen, this kind of sounds gross, but I'm going to, in our own text, the assignment was the commander of David's army. His name was Joel. He was to go to Edom and carry, kill every boy, every man, everything that was a male was to be killed. For six months, Joel slaughtered man after man after man. Six months, he continued to kill every man of Edom and to bury them. But there's one little boy that ran off, him and some servants, and they fled to Egypt. Now listen, it was later on, Joel, I don't know if Joel ever saw Hadad escape. I don't know if Joel ever recognized it or if he looked at Hadad, a very young boy, a little child, uh, and, and said, ah, oh, no need to worry about that little boy. What, what harm is this little fellow going to do? And all of a sudden, Hadad grows up in Egypt and he gains great favor with the king of Egypt. So much favor that the king gave, uh, later gave Hadad a house. He provided him his food. He, he gave all the land that Hadad needed. He blessed Hadad so much. As a matter of fact, he had so much favor in the eyes of the king of Egypt that Hadad was given a wife. Finally, Hadad hears the news. David's dead. Solomon's reigning. Hadad now is an adult. And all of a sudden he says, I don't have to worry about my life anymore. He goes to the king of Egypt and says, I want to go back to my home country. The king of Egypt says, what do you mean, Hadad? Have I not given you everything you've ever wanted? Have I not blessed you with everything you've ever needed? And he said, oh, yes, king. But I long to be in my own country. The Bible says the Lord raised him up as an enemy unto Solomon. He caused a man to begin to make trouble for Solomon. The Lord was so upset with Solomon. Remember, if you, <coughs> excuse me, if you were here last week, Solomon began to disobey God by worshiping other gods. He married all these women. All of these women brought in all of these different gods. And Solomon honored every god as it was Jehovah God. And he became, the Lord became so upset with him that he began to send an enemy. Now here's what I want to point out. Notice that.
the enemy that he sent, the one that got away. Hadad was the one that got away. This boy seemed so innocent at the time of the killing. The boy didn't seem like a threat. The boy didn't seem like a problem. But many years later, the one that got away comes back and is a problem. Some of you don't even know where I'm going this morning, so let me spell it out a little more clearly. There are some things in your life that you thought never mattered. There are some things in your life that you thought would never cause any harm. But all of a sudden, that little boy and that little thing has grown up and is now knocking at your door. You had a chance to kill this seed a long time ago, and you didn't kill it. You didn't deal with it. You allowed it to escape. Surely this little thing in my life will never make a difference. Now this thing be, it begins to grow up, and the one that got away slips back in your life and begins to cause havoc. Be careful with what you let get away. Right. Yeah. It's interesting that the Hebrew name of Hadad means I shall move softly. I shall move softly. The enemy that softly moved ran away, ran softly through the woods to escape into Egypt, grew up into a monster and now softly moves back into the life of Solomon. It may not be the strength of a strong tornado, and it may not be the strength of a hurricane, but slowly the enemy is allowed to softly and slyly sneak back into your life. You're in the church and you're worshiping. Seems like everything is all right. And little by little, that soft little thing that got away comes back and begins to pull you. You don't even notice that it's taking you away. It's so soft and so subtle and so sly. Nobody else notices that step by step, you're moving further away from God. As a matter of fact, you've not even noticed that you're not where you started because this soft little thing that got away that didn't matter, that soft little thing that can never cause a problem, that Hadad of your life slowly moves you out of the presence of God and you never even realize it. And before long, you're on the other side of your life. And now on this side, you begin to entertain other gods and other ideas and other religions. All of a sudden, you don't even realize that Hadad moved you away from the presence of the Most High God and put you in a place where there is no God, making you think everything's okay. Amen. Are you with me? you you got to be careful. Hadad's going to slowly and softly slip in your life. You've got to make sure you realize some of you this morning not even been concerned over the one that got away. You're not even concerned about it. You don't care that the little boy got away. You don't worry about this old past sin that you've never given up. You don't worry about this old stuff that's hidden in the closet. You're not concerned over it. I've come this morning to tell you it's time to address the one that got away. You with me this morning? Amen. Amen. You've got to address the one that got away. But Brother Chris, I, I don't know what to do. Here's what you're going to do. The Hadad of your life needs to be destroyed. Because if you don't destroy Hadad, it will come back to haunt you many years later. You may be living a happy life and everything's going good. And that Hadad that's been in Egypt, growing up into a man, now becomes your enemy. Right. And slowly, like a vine grows, every day it grows a little more. And before long, the vine chokes out all the life and everything around it. Wake up, church. Let us deal with the Hadads of our life. Let us deal with the one that got away. Amen? Amen. 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 Let me ask you some staggering questions. What's in your closet? You don't want to know. What's in your closet? <laughs> what do you have hiding deep down inside of your closet? What skeletons have you allowed to hang around too long? What have you allowed to slip away very softly and you've never dealt with it? And years of your life have gone by and the one that got away is coming back to take away your joy. The one that got away is coming back to destroy your family. The one that got away is coming back to take away your peace. The one that got away is coming back to take away your freedom. Listen, you've got to destroy it all or it will destroy yes. you. You yes. cannot leave things undone in your spirit. You cannot leave things in your closet. If you don't destroy it, it will come back to destroy you. Yes. Can you say amen this morning? Amen. You must be willing to give up everything. Get rid of pride and envy and greed and lust and hatred. Get rid of bitterness and anger. Get rid of the thrills of the flesh, the passion of your lust. Get rid of everything. There's no need to keep a Hadad in the closet. Right. Amen. Amen. Yes. Let me tell you something. Hadad will not sound an alarm to give you a warning. We love to play hide and go seek at my house with Sadie. And we'll count real loud. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Ready or not, here I come to sound the alarm that we're on the hunt. Listen, Hadad will not sound the alarm that he's coming to get you. You will not hear the blast 
of the trumpets. You will not hear the cadence of the drums. Hadad will move very softly back into your life. Right. And Hadad will become a prominent thing in your life that will begin to take away your joy. Right. Wake up, church. I'm trying to give you a divine word. Hadad is going to sneak yes. in your life and destroy where you are right now. Amen. I know this is a message that's hard to swallow, a message that's hard to choke, but I'm a pastor that has a responsibility to tell you if you're not careful, Hadad is going to destroy right where you're sitting on the church pew. Hadad yes. will softly move back yes. in your life and you'll yes. not have any freedom anymore yes. because Hadad was not taken care of. Amen. What about the one that got away? Amen. Another meaning of the name Hadad is I shall love. That's the second Hebrew meaning of the name Hadad. I shall love. You see, there's things that you'll not be willing to let go of because down deep you're still in love with it. There's some addictions and there's some, there's some strongholds in your life. There's some problems in your life that are being caused by certain thrills or passions of your flesh and you cannot let go of it because in reality you still love it. And we're afraid to let go of it. It's been there forever. It's been my. It's been what I run to when I'm in trouble. It's been the bottle ha hiding above the refrigerator that the kids can't see. It's been the magazine stuck between the mattresses of the, the bed that nobody can see. It's what I run to when I'm worried. It's what I run to when I'm stressed. Yeah. That Hadad is. It, you're in love with it. How can I ever let go of this? I like it. I love it. Wrong. You've got to let go of it. Yeah. That love affair will cause yeah. you and to default to stumble. You're afraid of what's going to happen if you let go of it. Amen. I'm going to say that again. You are afraid. You are afraid of what will happen if you let go of it. Yep. What's going to happen in my life, Pastor? I don't know. I've been comforted by this by so long. This has been my comfort blanket. This has been my security for so many years. What's going to happen if I let it go? But I'm afraid of what's going to happen to you if you do not let it go. You've got to let go of those things that you love from the old days. Yes, sir. You've got to let it go. Cleanse your hands. Purify your minds. Destroy the works of the old deeds of the old man. And let everything in your life become new. Yeah. Get rid of that Hadad in Jesus' name. Yes. Don't allow, allow him to cause you to fall in love with him. He'll softly and slowly move you away from God. And all of a sudden you fall in love with Hadad. He looks beautiful. He looks handsome. He's the right thing. He's the right idea. He's the right theology. He's saying everything you want to hear. He's doing everything you want to do. He's making you feel good. He's scratching your back and rubbing your head. Hadad is that perfect idea of what you've ever thought about. And he gets you to fall in love with him. And then all of a sudden you can't get rid of him. That's right. Yes, sir. Hadad will cause you to fall in love with him so that you won't destroy him. You with me this morning? Yes. In your life, the devil will cause you to fall in love with some things of your life <coughs> that you know shouldn't be there. The devil will cause you to fall in love with some issues in your life and you know you have no business being around it. Hadad will cause you to fall in love with a love affair that you know is wrong. Hadad will cause you to fall in love with a drug you know has no business being in your body. And you cannot get rid of it because you love it. Yes, sir. And you've been convinced that it's not even wrong. Because that's what you see through the eyes of love of Hadad. Surely it's not wrong. Romans chapter 6 verse 12 says... Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in the lust. Don't let sin live in your body. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. Don't give your life to sin, but yield yourselves unto God yes, as those that are alive from the dead. Give yourself to God and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Amen. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you're not under the law, but you're under grace. What you need to understand this morning, you surrender Hadad to God. You give that lust. You give that passion. You give that envy. You give that bitterness, that hatred, that love. You give that addiction to God. You surrender it to God. And all of a sudden God reigns in your life and you're no longer controlled by Hadad. But to God, but Hadad is controlled by you. What shall we say then? Shall sin? Shall we sin? Oh no. We should
should never sin because we're not under the law, but we're under grace. God forbid, know you not that to whom you yield yourselves as servants to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey. In other words, if you if you listen to Hadad, you become a Dodd servant. Yes, that's right. If you listen to his love affair, you become his lover. Yes, sure. You cannot listen to Hadad. Amen. But God be thanked that you were the servants of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered unto you. Being then made free from sin. Everybody say, I am free. You have become the servants of righteousness. In your life this morning, I come to bear good news. I know I beat you up about Hadad and his soft movements. I talked about Hadad and his love affair. But what I want to let you know is, Hadad doesn't have to control you. You need to get free from that skeleton in that closet and walk out and know that I have been free from sin. I'm now a servant of righteousness. Hadad cannot control me. A God cannot dictate what I do and how I do it. He cannot have. I will not let the one that got away destroy my future. Yeah. Romans chapter 8 verse 13 says, If you live after the flesh, you shall die. If you live after the flesh, if you live after Hadad, that one that snuck away and now comes back to haunt you, you shall die. But if you through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. You have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if we're children, we're heirs, we're heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with Him, we may also be glorified together. Christ wants you to be freely, completely free today. Yes, sir. He wants you to be completely delivered this morning. The old things from the past, He wants to die and destroy. Hadad should have never lived. Even as a young boy back in those days, Hadad should have died in a job. But instead, He's haunting David's son Solomon. Some of the things in your life should have never made it through the first phase of sanctification. Yes, right. But you kept it away. I'm not just talking to sinners in this house. I'm talking to Christians. Mm -hmm. I know about Christians that have some things that keep holding them back. That Hadad keeps sneaking around. And notice what the Bible said about Solomon. Hadad didn't wreak a lot of havoc. He was mischief. In other words, in my mind, he always kept something stirred up. Always kept a fire poked. Always kept something troublesome. Always kept a worry around. Always kept a, a nervous something around. Because he was not dealt with. God wants all your objects, your idols, all the feelings that you've ignored and ever got rid of. He wants to deliver you from all of that. Christ wants you to be an heir of God. A joint heir with Christ Jesus. But you've got to surrender your everything this morning. Amen. Sister Sandra, if you come. Listen, you've got to get rid of the one... You've got to get rid of the one that got away. Deal with the one that got away. You've got to deal with your Hadad. You cannot let Hadad softly sneak into your life and cause you to fall in love with him. And then you know what happens? He sneaks in your life, you softly fall in love with him. A preacher preaches a message and you go, I can't do that. I can't come to the altar. Right. I can't. How many times have a preacher said this? It's just not my time yet. What do you mean it's not your time yet? Anytime's the right time to get right with Jesus. Well, I, I'm just not ready yet. You know why you're not ready? Because you're in love with her dog. Right. Look at me and smile. You're in love with her dog. That's why it's not the right time. Her dog continue to give you a reason why not to come to this altar. Hadad will continue to give you reasons and excuses why you live in such bitterness and anger. you got to get rid of Hadad. He's got to be destroyed. His seed has got to be destroyed. Or he'll spring up and choke out life in your, in your life. Let's deal with that soft, loving creature that wants to destroy you. Stand with me.